Welcome to the Prevention Platform, where our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to prevent problems before they occur. Here at Valley Youth House, we believe that prevention is key to living a healthy and successful life, and we are excited to share our expertise with you. We hope that you find our discussions informative, engaging, and relevant to your own parenting journey. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the world of prevention together. Welcome to the Prevention Platform. I am so excited for today's first episode of our podcast. It is back to school time. And this may not always be a fun time for kids. They have been used to being on their own schedules, maybe sleeping in, going on some vacations or getaways with their families, and all of a sudden it is time to go back to school and return to the routine and the hustle and bustle. So we're going to do something a little bit different here for our first episode, and instead of focusing solely on school, we are going to talk about art, because art can play a really crucial role in supporting mental health. Engaging creative activities like painting, drawing, or writing can provide a sense of relief and relaxation, reducing stress and anxiety. Art also allows people to express themselves and work through difficult emotions in a safe and non-judgmental environment. Art can really go a long way in positively impacting our mental health and overall well-being. So on today's episode, we have two amazing guests who are going to talk about the benefits of art when it comes to our mental health. And to celebrate our first episode, we are really excited to partner with Crayola to raffle off a basket filled with Crayola products to help you and your kids get back into the swing of things for back to school time. Be sure to check out the description for today's episode so that you can see how to enter the raffle. We are very fortunate to be joined today by James Wells, who is the education manager for Crayola. And James is joining us from Memphis, Tennessee to talk with us about the importance of art when it comes to the mental health of our young people. James, thank you so much for joining us here on our podcast. And I'm so happy that you're here to talk with us about art and how art can help with our mental health. Thank you, Ashley. It is a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. So, James, can you go ahead and share with us what (laughs) is your position at Crayola and and what do you do there? So uh, for our listening audience, you probably heard of our company. Um, I like to say we're the most colorful company in the world, and I have the pleasure uh, to be at service to educators, parents, and teachers uh, as the education manager for the company. And what that simply means is I design content to support creative experiences in school uh, as well as at home. And um, and that can manifest in many ways. Um, Now, in today's digital world, uh, we often consume our content through digital media. And uh, at Crayola Education, we have uh, digital programs where I serve as a host of a few of those, and I know we'll talk about that today, uh, as well as uh, I do demo videos, uh, demonstration videos through a series called Creativity Tips, uh, where I do short form videos to introduce art techniques through everyday learning experiences. So uh, that's one aspect of the work, and I also uh, work with educators through professional development, providing uh, in-person learning experiences uh, as needed uh, or as as time would allow, but most of those happen uh, digitally as well. So uh, just a lot of great opportunities and experiences, again, to be at service to our educators who are working with our students as well as parents. That's amazing. I love that. How long have you been with Crayola? I've been with the company now for six years. Okay. So, and it's been it's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience, wonderful ride uh, to see how even in my short time, 
how the company has um, been creative through pandemic and through the changes in education. So uh, it's just great to, to be a part of the, this company and uh, the mission that we have, you know, again, in service of educators, uh, students, and families. That's awesome. And what is your background as far as before Crayola, what did you do? Yes, so uh, I have a, a pretty extensive background in the arts, so I'm going to try to summarize this uh, <laughs> for everyone. But uh, prior to Crayola, I was a a district art administrator uh, here in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, where I helped to um, support over 200 visual art and theater educators uh, through curriculum development, as well as uh, other neat experiences. And uh, prior to that, and I'm going to try to quickly summarize this is, you know, my background is in state art agencies, so provided grants and support to uh, individual artists, arts organizations, uh, schools, as well as uh, I was a museum educator before that. I worked for uh, a science, history, and art museum system. And then before that, I was in the classroom where I taught middle school students as a visual arts educator, as well as uh, high school students. So lots of experiences, lots of fun, creative experiences that I believe prepared me for where I am today. Uh, with the work that I do at Crayola, and then, of course, being able to share that through uh, this podcast uh, with you. I was going to say, absolutely. It sounds like you have a lot of really relevant, great experiences, and I'm sure you're really happy to be able to combine all of your interests in your current position. That's, that's amazing. Um, so let's talk about art a little bit, and from our perspective, at Valley Youth House, we have over 80 youth serving programs. And so in terms of incorporating art into the work that we do, I think it's a daily activity. And I think that there are so many opportunities to include art in terms of working with youth, especially when it comes to mental health. So in all of your experiences and in your opinion, how do you feel that art plays a role in mental health? Well, I think, thank you for the question. I think that's a good question. And I'm actually going to build on one of the things that I know about Valley Youth Health is, and that is, um, you know, part of your mission is helping youth build foundations for growth and independence. And I think that visual art from a very foundational aspect does just that, right? I mean, we can go all the way back to our cave days where we use art as a medium to communicate ideas, thoughts, and you take that and fast forward really fast to present day and nothing has really changed with that. So when we think about building foundations for growth, independence, independent ideas, thoughts, um, art is certainly foundational in that aspect where it can help kids children, even adults, uh, navigate daily emotions, feelings, and art is foundational in that we can make those ideas, those feelings, those thoughts visible, right? We're able to recognize and pinpoint how we're feeling in any particular moment. And I think that's the beauty of art. It's a communication medium, and it's something that is sort of natural to us all. Um, now, obviously, you know, artists, depending on your practice level, uh, we get better at things than others uh, if it is, in fact, a daily practice. But uh, if you're not aspiring to be an artist, just simply putting a color on the page to say, hey, I'm feeling this way and this color is uh, indicative of that, I'm going to associate that feeling with this color. You're recognizing how you feel mentally, physically in that moment. And I think that's what the arts can do. Now that's visual, right? I mean, we can certainly pinpoint examples uh, through music, right? Which is something that we all tend to do. We sing a tune, uh, whether it's in the shower or in the car or on the walk. And we know that songs, uh, rhythms, dance, movement can um, 
associate to some sort of mental feeling or health. So I think that these two kind of go hand in hand and the arts have a role in helping us to inform and navigate those feelings and those emotions in any particular moment. Absolutely. I love that so much. That was a great answer. Um, you clearly did some research on Valley's house, which which is which is amazing. Um, but I I think it's so important that you made that connection between, you know, using art as a tool and as a mechanism to to show and to demonstrate how you're feeling, right? And I think that ties into a lot of what we see is some youth just don't have the, the coping skills in place to communicate their feelings and their emotions appropriately. And so I think using art, whether that's, um, you know, markers or paint or whether it's dance and movement, I mean, there are so many different, um, different ways that you, can, that you can do that. So I love that answer. Thank you so much for that. Yes, and Ashley, if it's okay, if I could give this a uh, quick example, like, you know, us Absolutely. having this conversation about this, uh, it reminds me of uh, a principal that I met through work here at Crayola, and uh, there were these group of boys that uh, landed in her office, right? And we know that going to the principal office oftentimes is something that you don't want to do, and there was some sort of uh, tension that was happening amongst the group of boys and they were so tense that they couldn't communicate uh, with her and the first thing she did and she's made this now a common practice before she had a conversation with the boys she has a sitting area or sort of a reset room where she puts out art supplies and materials to one, help calm down and ease, right? So in terms of like the, the hand in hand with art and mental health. So using art making to help ease the mind, the anxiety, help to center those emotions. Uh, and if for, some, if for some reason you can't put those emotions into words, you can put them into pictures, right? And she uses that as a step one before the actual conversation happens with students. So we're seeing practices like this happen in the classroom, in school buildings, in districts. Uh, and in this case, this principal uh, is using art as a, a mechanism to help students um, relax, restore, so that we can have productive conversation around what actually just happened. Right. And I think in all of the programs that we have here at Valley Youth House, especially the prevention programs, which many of them take place in the school setting, we are constantly trying to figure out how do we help kids to express those emotions appropriately in the way that they're feeling, because sometimes they don't have the words for it. And so hand them, you know, some watercolors and they can show us how they're feeling or you know, even incorporate some of that mindfulness coloring. And I think that helps kids to calm down. So I think there's a lot of really great ways to, to incorporate art. So thank you for that. Um, do you have any specific examples of how you can incorporate art practices into improving mental health? You had mentioned, you know, um, a couple of things, but I'm not sure if you have any other suggestions. Oh my gosh, I have tons of examples here. So <laughs> I'm going to try to limit those uh, for the sake of the audience. This could go on and on. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I absolutely love is nature, right? I think that nature is uh, a gift to us all, right? To step away and to relax and ease into, um, into life really, and I love to go on walks. And when we go on walks, you think about the various things that we see, uh, from the birds to plants, bees, right? We see all of these magical things in nature. And I think that um, that one example of just getting outside right now, that's not an art practice, but I'm gonna get to it. Uh, but just kind of taking a, a brief walk around your block, in your neighborhood, right, at the park, so I think that taking walks can help to just kind of relax you, right? Control your breath, ease yourself. 
So I think taking walks. Now, in terms of art making, one of the things that I love to do is to bring a sketchbook, right? And to sit and uh, sketch the trees, right? Or maybe you find a favorite flower or plant that you love and draw that. Or maybe you um, are infatuated with ants, right? I would do this, this art activity where we would just follow the path of an ant, right? And see where the line takes you, right? So you're following the line, you're following the ant to see how busy they are. And as you're doing that, you're helping to kind of focus and ease your mind and be mindful in that moment, right? And mindful meaning you are present in what's happening instead of mindful of lots of stuff like, you know, I got to do homework. I have to do this. I have to go here. I have to go there. No, we're not saying mindful of things, but mindful of the moment that you're in and present in that moment. So uh, doing things like that has certainly uh, helped me, right, in terms of uh, uh, using nature to, to center myself through art making. Another example is uh, when I was in the classroom uh, working with students, uh, one of my favorite art experiences, I would say learning experiences with students was creating Zen tangles. And uh, I don't know if our viewing audience or listening audience rather is uh, familiar with that, but you should look it up. Zen tangles is uh, an art technique where uh, you're using a combination of lines and shapes, repeated patterns over and over again. And by doing this repetition of lines, shapes, patterns, it's again, easing you into this moment where you are centered and focused and you're mindful of every mark that you're making. And every mark is intentional. Now, the really neat thing about Zentangles is oftentimes you start and only use a marker. And part of the reason is using markers is a metaphor of life. Every mark you make is, uh, is likely permanent, but the beauty is you can build on that mark and create other marks, right? So nothing is a mistake, right? nothing is final, right? Uh, so you can always build, create, on top of that mark and it's symbolic of life, right? Everything we do oftentimes can be or feel permanent, but that's not the end, right? So Zentangles, I highly encourage you if you've not experienced that sort of art making uh, technique, uh, try it out. And it can be as small as a three inch by three inch sheet of paper to when I did it with my students, it was 18 by 24, so it got pretty large in terms of what they created. And you could hear, whenever we would do this art activity, you could hear the meditation, the silence, the concentration. And it wasn't because I was like, you know, you have to be quiet as you create. No, that's not what we wanna do, right? Because that can certainly hinder or limit creativity. But students were so hyper-focused and so present in that moment that they couldn't help but to honor what was happening and it relaxed them. And I got all sorts of really interesting notes uh, from students at the end of the year saying that this was the best art experience that they ever had. And it was just simply drawing lines, shapes, patterns, right? Uh, so very non-threatening, something that we all do, right? We use lines, shapes to write letters and do various things. So actually, instead of writing letters, you're drawing letters and uh, we're using those same lines and shapes that we uh, use in images and pictures. We use those for lines and other things. So Zentangle is one. Getting outside in nature is certainly another. And uh, lots of more, lots of other examples, but I think I'll go on and on. There. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I've not heard of the Zentangle method, but I am looking it up as we speak and it seems like something like you mentioned that anybody can do it's easily accessible and i i just love this idea and so for all of our listeners i think this would be um an incredible way to start you know incorporating art into a mental health practice and it does seem to be relaxing and also fun so thank you so much for sharing that absolutely that's really that's really cool. 
Okay, so James, I think my last question for you before we move into a little game that we're going to play would be um, for you to tell us about the most recent project that you're working on over at Crayola. I know you had kind of something in the works that you are um, working on to target educators. So if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. So in the spirit of what we're discussing today in terms of art, mental health, well-being, uh, we started a digital series called Creative Spa for Teachers, or essentially uh, anyone that, that teaches children. Um, and the intent of this program is to help celebrate and rejuvenate teachers' creative spirit, whether it's at school or at home. We provide this energizing, empowering, colorful experience uh, for teachers. And the guests that are part of this, this is an interview format program where we interview um, uh, an expert in their particular field. And it also involves a hands-on creative experience that will help to de-stress and relax us all. So we've had astrophysicists where we're looking at stargazing, right? As we're looking at the stars, we're looking in the past, as well as the present and into the future. So think about that for a moment. As you go outside, you're seeing things from thousands of years ago to present day, as well as thousands of years, maybe into the future, right? So being present in that moment to know that you're experiencing that is such a, a mindful experience and relaxing, relaxing experience. So uh, stargazing is one. We've had sand art. Uh, I mentioned Zentangles. We actually have uh, a Creative Spa uh, video that we did on the art of Zentangle, where we invited a Zentangle artist to share that process. And again, those who are viewing can or are encouraged to draw along, uh, create alongside us as we, again, de-stress, relax, rejuvenate, rekindle our creative spirit. Now, in doing that for ourselves, we don't want it to just stop with us, right, as those who are consuming the content. But the call to action is for us to take that to our students, because we know that these sort of big words of stress and um, anxiety and other things, uh, these are things that we are seeing in students, and probably more so now than ever as a result of you know, pandemic teaching and lots of other uh, factors. So we're seeing that in education, the focus on student well-being, whole child focus beyond just the, the academics, but social, emotional, we're seeing a focus around that. And we know, we believe that creativity plays a role in helping to mitigate and support uh, uh, some of those those things that may be uh, may be uh, of need to to our students and our educators. So that program, sorry, uh, is a free program. I should say, totally free, and you can access that through our Crayola Education Facebook page. Just go there, and you will see upcoming videos as well as those videos in the past. So I highly encourage. Uh, our audience that's that's listening today to go and check out our Facebook page to view those videos, as well as other series that we have, uh, Read Along, Draw Along, and we have an Art of Learning series. Uh, so lots of creative experiences, but in the context of well-being, mental health, creative spa for teachers is certainly the way to go. Absolutely, and I, and I really appreciate you for sharing that because, and I can be a testament to the fact that the resources that you're mentioning here are so wonderful, whether it's parents, educators, anybody who works with kids of any age. Um, and I think that's really the beauty of art. And it's just that anybody can can do it. And there's no right or wrong way to, to express yourself um, when it comes to art. And so, so thank you, James, so much for, for all of your information and your insight. We really appreciate it, and I, I really love getting the chance to talk to you. It has been a pleasure, absolutely. So James, before you go, um, we are going to play a little quick little rapid fire game where I'm gonna ask 
10 questions and you can just answer them. You don't need to, you know, explain. And I think this is just a way for us to get to know you a little bit better. So okay. are you ready for some rapid fire? Ooh, I think I am. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So number one, what has been your favorite age so far? Favorite age so far, I would say, is my current age, which is 40. <laughs> okay. What is your go-to lazy dinner? Go-to lazy dinner would be pizza. Okay. That's good. Can't go wrong with that. Veggie what is pizza. Your... <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite thing to do in the summertime? Favorite thing to do in summer would be vacation with my family. What is one of your nicknames? Nickname for me would be, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's a really good one. Uh, my mother calls me uh, her Crayola guy. How about Aww. that? <laughs> that's adorable. What was your major in college? My major was uh, art education. Is your bed made right now? Absolutely. What movie do you enjoy quoting the most? Whoa. Uh, the movie I enjoy quoting the most would be Coming to America. Nice. If you could be transformed into one animal, which one would you choose? Uh, let's see. One animal. I would be a bird. What is your hidden talent? Hidden talent would be, let's see, hidden in the sense that no one sees me, right? Yeah. No me doing this. Uh, I would say that my hidden talent would be cooking. Okay. And last, do you have a favorite board game? Favorite board game would be Gosh, there's so many. I like I, I like Monopoly. <laughs> uh, it takes forever though, right? It takes forever. So there is there is a card game Monopoly because we yeah we've sort of decided this as a family. We uh, we play the the card Monopoly game, which is like thirty minutes versus okay. three hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I like Monopoly, but we're probably more card game. We're more of a card game family than a board game. I'm also being joined today by Caitlin Snyder, who is one of our school-based counselors for our school-based counseling program here at Valley Youth House. Hi, Katie. Hi, Ashley. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Wonderful. I am so happy to have you on the podcast today because First of all, you're amazing, and I really am so, so happy that you are one of our school-based counselors in our school-based counseling program, and we can talk about that in a little bit, but also because we are talking about art and how art helps mental health and can help improve somebody's mental health, and so I really feel like this is a topic that is near and dear to you, and... Yeah, so I'm excited to, to have you on. So Katie, before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about what you do as a school-based counselor. Sure. So I work in the school-based counseling program, as you said. Um, I work in the elementary school level, so I go see students um, that are referred through the school or by their parents. Um, I primarily see them individually, but sometimes we do groups. Um, with the elementary school kids, they get super excited about doing art in sessions, which is like combining the like loves of my life doing counseling and art. Um, my background is in art therapy. I'm currently working towards my licensure, um, which has been a long process. But so now this is like my dream position, being able to meld counseling and helping people and bringing art and creativity together. I love that. And so I think one of the best things about our school-based counseling program is that it really is accessible to any student who is in one of the schools that hosts our program. So I don't know if you can talk about that piece a little bit as well. 
So our program, you know, like you said, is very accessible, meaning we don't charge insurance. Um, so we are able to reach so many different students. Um, like even if they have services outside of school, we can still assist them in school. Um, our process is really quick. So instead of having a really long wait list, we're able to see students with a really quick turnaround time and we're able to meet them in the school. So we don't have to worry about parents having to transport. We don't have to worry about working around work schedules. Um, and the teachers are really excited to have us in their buildings because we can provide that extra support. So if there's a student that's really struggling, um, we can you know take them on a walk during the day. We can help um, you know give them breaks um, and we're able to work with the teachers to create a plan to really support the students um, that shows that, you know, we're there to help them just as much as the students. So as a school-based counselor for Valley Youth House, what are some of the main issues that you've been seeing students facing at the elementary school level? Um, a huge level of high anxiety, especially with the younger ones transitioning into school, being separated from their parents. Um, for some of the younger ones, this is their first time being separated, especially coming out of COVID. Um, a lot of them are struggling with social skills because they haven't had opportunities to socialize with others. Um, really high levels of depression, even amongst the younger ones, um, which was a shocker to see. Um, but there's just, you know, there's a lot going on in the world and they're very aware of it um, and all the stressors and the transitions that are going on. Um, and, you know, they carry that with them. So those are big things, um, along with like attention struggling to pay attention in class because um, they're, again, they're transitioning back and they're not used to having to focus on a task for a long period of time or having to follow instructions in the classroom because um, they were used to being at home where it was a little bit more flexible or it was just very different. Absolutely. I think those are really important points. And I think a lot of times what we're seeing is just that lack of coping skills and being able to express emotions appropriately and um, really deal with some of the challenges that they're facing in a healthy way. And I think that's what's so great about our school-based counseling program is it's, it's another trusted adult who's in the school setting and easily accessible and can really help with those things. So you are a certified art therapist, is that accurate? So I'm currently working towards um, becoming a registered art therapist. And then after that, I would become a board certified art therapist. So working towards that, you have to love art, right? Absolutely. It's definitely a long process because um, you have to go through, you know, your four years of school and then your extra years in graduate school. Um, so there's an entire specialized program to become an art therapist that helps you learn the skills to meld counseling with, you know, your love of art. And so what do you think is so great about art? Right? Why, why, is it, why is this such an awesome thing and you know, how can you really incorporate that in your counseling? So I think there are times that we experience things that we're not able to put words to that art allows us to express. Um, I think music also you know, works in that way, but art just really resonated with me growing up. That was the way I expressed myself. That was a way that I you know, worked through things that have happened in my life that when I found out what art therapy was, I was like, this is so, this is, this is my calling. Um, because like I said, there are times that I think, especially when we're younger, we don't have words for things that we might not know the right way to talk about it, but we are so naturally inclined to express ourselves. Um, you know, kids will gravitate towards drawing, towards painting. They love that stuff. That's how they talk. Um, that that was, you know, when I found that was a career path, I was like, that, that's for me. I think the most, one of the most interesting things about art in general is the idea that we have these thoughts and feelings and emotions, and until we put them on paper or get them out of our bodies somehow, in some cases, they're not really validated for, for some people. And so I think art is just one of the many different ways that you can learn to express your feelings appropriately. Um, so as far as being an art therapist, what do you 
What do you love the most about it? Why do you feel like it's your calling? Definitely being able to see like that light click for people that might not feel that art is for them and realizing that it is something that they can do because what's different about art therapy versus being in, in an art class is there are no expectations. You are just creating so you can explore with different materials. And I think a lot of people get turned off from art because they're so used to it being graded or expectations being very, very high. Whereas art therapy is the complete opposite of that. It's just focusing on expressing yourself. It's just focusing on your relationship to the materials and building that relationship with the person that's making art with you. Um, and it really helps to break down those barriers. Like it can be super uncomfortable going into a therapy office and not knowing the person that's sitting next to you, but it helps to break down that barrier and build that connection because you can make art together. And it's giving, it's giving that tangible tool for somebody that they can take with them when they're out of therapy to help them express themselves. They can then go, you know, doodle. They can have these tools that you can give to them that they can take that they don't need you. You know, that's building that confidence, that's building those coping skills. Um, that I feel is just really, really profound. Right, I, I've never thought about it like that. And I think that is a, a really great way of, of thinking about art. And so I, I appreciate you for, for explaining that a little bit more. Katie, do you have any examples of projects that you have used in your counseling sessions that maybe could be easily done at home for somebody who's not necessarily meeting with a counselor? So one of the big things, and this was kind of debated for a while in the art therapy fields, but something that's very popular are coloring pages. Um, those can easily be, you know, printed off at home. Um, they're, you know, a whole bunch that you can find at the stores um, and just putting on music and coloring that brings on you know mindfulness it helps people slow down um, and that can be done you know for little to no cost at all um, another thing is just painting or drawing with music on that also helps us slow down helps us be mindful and you don't necessarily have to have any sort of um, you know end goal in mind um, origami is a good one there's lots of um, videos on YouTube that you can follow along with that really helps to like challenge your brain and also to like focus on something to again help you slow down and take yourself out of maybe like a really heightened moment to focus on something that you can fiddle with in your hands. Those are really great examples of projects that can be done at home and I know as a parent I have you know, struggled at times with with my children as they've experienced big feelings, right? The sadness, the fear, um, the anger. And so I have found myself starting to pull from these art techniques a little bit more in my own home because first of all, it's very inexpensive to do. You can create art really with with any type of medium. Um, and I said to my seven year old who was upset about something, let's, let's grab this. I had a coloring book. I said, you know what, let's just sit here and we're going to color. We'll talk together. And it was just really nice to have that moment with him where we were coloring and, you know, he started talking about what it was that was making him upset. And, um, so I can see how you would find art to be really helpful in terms of, you know, helping kids to talk about, about their feelings. And a lot of times when we're feeling big feelings, we feel it in our body, right? And we, a lot of times you'll see like little kids wanting to like act out physically because that's just, they need to get that feeling out. Well, art is a way to channel that movement that need to move too as well, because you can put, you know, big pieces of paper on a wall and have them draw with markers or, you know, um, one of the exercises that I've done with kiddos is that we'll put a big piece of paper up and I'll give them a marker and I'll say, okay, what, what does that look like? Like what movement captures how you're feeling right now? And we'll repeat that movement. So maybe they'll be drawing a big slash mark on the paper and we'll keep doing that until, 
you know, they're, they're calm and then they're able to talk about it and they're able to say, this was what I was feeling then. This is what I was feeling now. And we can always then revisit that artwork and then say like, what do we want to turn this into? So it doesn't have to be this, this was our finished thing where we're really angry. This is where we started. What can we transform it into? Right. And I think there's also many things that can be done with colors, right? Like you're angry. Great. What color is going to help you express that anger in an appropriate way? Is it red? Is it, is it black? Is it brown? Um, and so I think there's that whole piece to it too, out of this whole box of crayons, which color are you going to use? And, um, I just think there's a lot of opportunities for creativity when you're, when you're working with art. So thank you so much. So Katie, the last thing that we're going to do today is something just called rapid fire. And I'm going to ask you 10 rapid fire questions. And when you answer them, you don't need to explain anything. You can just say the first thing that pops into your head. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. What is your favorite time of day? Mid-morning. When are you the most inspired? Probably mid-morning. Sweet or savory? Sweet. Heels, flats, or sneakers? Ooh, flats. What is the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Ooh, we went on a three-week road trip that was pretty spontaneous. We had no timeline. We had no real like plan as to where we were going to go. We just drove and spent a lot of quality time together. It was a lot of fun. What is your favorite piece of clothing or an article of something that you wear? Oh, probably a hoodie from the college I attended. It's well loved. <laughs> Do you have any pet peeves? Ooh. I think when people keep clicking their pens. <laughs> How about your favorite season? Uh, summer. A bucket list thing that you would like to do in your life? Traveling to Italy. I would love to go to Italy and just eat pasta and bread and pizza. <laughs> yeah, I want to eat all the food and I want to see all the art, drink all the coffee. <laughs> and last, uh, do you have a favorite movie? Ooh, Titanic. All right. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice to have you on and, and talk about art. And we're looking forward to, you know, you getting your certification. And, and we're, we're excited for that. Well, thanks for having me. It was great. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of the Prevention Platform. Be sure to check out Valley Youth House on our website at www.valleyyouthhouse.org. We hope to see you next time.